Greetings fellow Whovians, hope you're having a good week so far. Well today we're going to look at the penultimate chapter of the Key to Time story arc with the power of Kroll. So here we go. The Doctor and Romana have arrived on the third moon of Delta Magna, searching for the penultimate segment of the Key to Time, finding themselves caught in the middle of a dispute between the crew of the methane refinery and the natives known as Swampies. The Swampies claim the crew have disturbed the waters and will incur the wrath of Kroll. It turns out Kroll is a giant squid which surfaces to feed every few centuries and is the source of the abnormally large amount of methane being mined. Once of normal size, it ingested the fifth segment of the key to time and began to grow and became a godlike figure to the Swampies and their descendants. After Kroll awakens and begins to attack both the Swampies and the refinery indiscriminately, the Doctor uses the tracer to eliminate Kroll and retrieve the segment of the key, in the process saving the planet's inhabitants and removing any need for a methane refinery. The Doctor and Romana return to the TARDIS and set off on their next adventure. And that's it. So anyway, let's look at some production no notes here. When script editor Anthony Redd asked Robert Holmes to write the story, there were two requirements. That include the largest monster in series history, and that Holmes minimized humor that many scripts from the era were known for. This second requirement was a request from higher up at the BBC. Early titles for the story were Moon of Death and Horror of the Swamp. Holmes said that he considered the idea of a large monster a mistake given the budgetary constraints at the BBC and named The Power of a Crawl as his least favorite Doctor Who story. Yeah, I could definitely see why. Extensive location filming took place in Snape, Suffolk, around the River Al Ald from Monday September 18, 1978, to represent the marshes featured in the script. Nine days of location filming were reported to the serial, including two night shoots, more than is usual for a Doctor Who story. Studio sequences were taped during October 1978. The serial was directed by Norman Stewart, who had directed the Underworld story a year previously. This was his final assignment on the program. The actors playing Swampies were colored green with a special water-resistant dye ordered from Germany. Unfortunately, the makeup artist failed to order the special dye remover, with the result that many of the actors had to take chemical baths to get the green dye off, and many had a green tint for a long period after production was finished. Costume designer Colin Lavers introduced a new tweed coat for the doctor, which sported four flying duck brooches on its lapels. Around this time, producer Graham Williams fell ill and his duties were taken on by Anthony Redd and production unit manager John Nathan Turner. <coughs> John Nathan Turner, assisted by Blake 7 producer David Maloney. Among the cast were a number of actors who had previously appeared in Doctor Who playing other characters. The most notable of these was Felt Maddock, who had previously appeared in The Crotons, The War Games, and The Brain of Morbius. He had initially been invited to play Thawne, but the role was given to George Baker, who then pulled out. Maddock agreed to play the part of Fenner when Alan Browning, who was slated to play Fenner, fell ill before the start of production, but was dissatisfied with the role. John Leeson, best known as, as the voice of Canine, appears in the story as Dugin. This is his only on-screen appearance in Doctor Who, and was given the role due to the fact that Canine doesn't appear in this story. The role had previously been offered to Martin Jarvis. Neil McCarthy previously played Barnum in The Mind of Evil, while John Ebenieri previously played Van... Van Van Ludians, I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced, sorry, in Fury from the Deep, General Carrington in The Ambassadors of Death, and Richard Rowlington in Death to the Daleks. So overall, it's a pretty basic story, and well, as the second to last chapter of the Key to Time story, it's just okay. So overall, I give The Power of Crawl three sonic screwdrivers out of five. Well, join me next week as the Keep Time Story arc comes to a close with the Armageddon Factor. So, until then, this is Hooping Queen saying, Oh my giddy aunt! When I say run, run! I've a risk of polarity the new Trump low. Would you like a jelly baby? Fantastic! Allons-y! Geronimo! Bowties are cool, fences are cool, and Stetsons are cool. <laughs>